Shall we wait a little bit longer? Wait, yeah, it's not 3 p.m. yet. Yeah, it's 7.59 here, so I'll wait one more minute, and uh, then I'll go into an introduction. Okay. I'm setting up the uh, the recording uh, stuff. All right. So that we can hopefully have enough. Modules. Now BDD, on the other hand, like I mentioned earlier, it builds upon TDD with the difference being that you write a feature test case, or rather the stakeholder writes a feature test case. They specify what sort of requirements they want in simplified English, after which they then pass it on over to the developer. The developer will then build their test cases around the feature test requirements provided. So the process here is the same, it's still red, green, refactor. So when they first build the test case and they run it, it's obviously going to fail because there's no implementation. They then add the implementation to make it green and they refactor as and when necessary as requirements change. They then pass this back to the stakeholder for evaluation. Now assuming it meets the requirements of the feature test specified by the test by the stakeholder, they then pass it. And then, of course, as conditions change or new requirements are added, this cycle repeats. So that's pretty much the testing life cycle for TDD and BDD in a nutshell. Let's move on to the utilities we'll be using for Node.js. So the assumption here is that you guys know how to get Node.js up and running in your environment. You can head on over to nodejs.org to download the executables or find instructions on how you can install it on say Mac or Linux. The EXE will be for if you're running on Windows. Now, the first utility I want to talk about is Mocha. Mocha is the, it's pretty much the de facto testing framework for Node.js. It supports both TDD and BDD test flavors as I'll show later on and it has support for asynchronous, synchronous testing, but for this demo, I'll only be running you guys through the synchronous testing to keep it simple. We can cover asynchronous testing in any of the follow-up webinars I'll be holding from time to time. And the beauty of Mocha is it runs on both Node.js and the browser as well. So if you're, for instance, building an application for the front end in Angular JS. You can also use Mocha in, uh, to write test cases for your AngularJS web app. Now, Mocha should be installed globally. So I provided the command over here, npm install dash g Mocha. So assuming you have node set up, it should come with npm, at least version 0.10.x. You install Mocha globally so that you can run the Mocha command line utility when you are running your test cases. Now, the thing about Mocha is it provides the framework for your writing your test cases, but it does not provide any assertion utilities. It is It leaves that up to you. So you can use any assertion utility that you want. You can use the vanilla assertion utility that comes with Node.js core, known as the assert module, or what I prefer to use is Chai, and it's also quite a popular assertions library. This library supports both TDD and BDD styles of writing assertions, which I'll also show later on during the demo. This assertions library works very well with Mocha, and it also runs on both Node.js and the browser. As for installing Chai, you're not going to install it globally. 
you're going to install it local to your project folder. So the command to do that in your project folder will be npm install chai. So that will install chai along with whatever dependencies the library requires. Now, for the hands-on PDD demo, I'm going to create a simple object called the collections object. So it's collections class. And I'm going to write test conditions to test four different methods here. So this class is pretty much a wrapper of the array object to keep things simple. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, I'm gonna create a new directory called JS testing. So let's call it collection since we are building a collection object. So I see in collection. Now here I'm going to create a directory called tests. I am going to create some files, collection.js to hold the collection class, and test slash collection.js to test the collection class. Now I'm going to install chai as a dependency using npm install chai. <clears throat> I hit enter, I wait for it to complete. All right, so Chai has completed installation, and I don't need to install Mocha because I already have it installed globally. Confirm, I can just type npm ls g space Mocha, and as you can see, it shows Mocha with a version number 2.0.1. If the module was not installed, you essentially get an empty tree. <clears throat> so now I have the tests directory. Let's Get started with the test case over here. So since we are going with the TDD style, we use the suit method. This method will be injected by the Mocha library later on when you run it through the Mocha command line. So you don't need to worry about requiring the Mocha module at the top just yet. Here, let's just say collection class. We pass a function argument. Inside here, inside here. We can start testing individual attributes and methods. Let's start with length. Here we start writing the tests. So the first thing we want to test for is uh, length equals zero when collection empty. Which makes sense because the length attribute should only return zero if there are no items in the collection. So let's create a dummy object to house the collection. And we need the assert library. So chai, I'm going to require the chai module. Chai. And then assert, I pull it from chai module. Now if I want to do an equals assertion, I just run assert.equal. So this is the expected value and this is the attribute you see object which represents an instance of the collection class. Now let's try running the test case. So we use the Mocha command line utility. Now, by default, Mocha runs test cases in EDD flavor. So we have to explicitly specify that we want to switch to the EDD interface. We do that using the double dash UI flag. And then we specify EDD, after which we pass tests collection.js. <clears throat> we then hit enter. And as expected, the test should fail on the first go because we don't have an implementation for the test case just yet. So let's see what error it's giving. It says cannot read property length of undefined. 
because C is pretty much undefined at this point. So now let's include the collection class, which we'll create in a bit. One directory up. So that should be collection. And let me open it up in a separate tab. Right, so it's empty right here. <clears throat> now, if you want to instantiate or maybe prep the environment before and after a test condition is run, you can do so using the setup method and we pass it a function. So what happens over here is this little method here runs once for every test condition you specify in your suite. So if I were to add another one over here, let's call it the second condition for now. And if I were to run test again, you see that setup ran twice despite having a single implementation. And the same is true for pair down, which runs after the condition completes. I would do test it up here. You'll see that setup runs and then tear down and then again setup and tear down. So you need to create your environment and then destroy it, prep your environment for every single test, reset it for instance, you can use both the setup and teardown method. For now, I won't be using teardown method, I'll just be using setup to initialize C to instantiate the collection object. So now if I run this, obviously it's still going to fail because I have not defined my collection class. So let's go back to our implementation. So in order to create a class in JavaScript or to emulate a class, use the function object. Let's call it collection. And then we need to export the collection function. That's the bare minimum necessary. We add the collections class and we run the test case again. Now it's telling us that expected zero to equal to undefined. We go back to the test case over here. The reason for this being is because the instance of collection over here does not have a length attribute simply because we have not provided it a length attribute. So let's go ahead and do that now. So I'm going to overwrite the collection prototype. And I'm going to add the length attribute. And in accordance with EDD testing principles, you want to keep your implementation as simple as possible, just barely enough to pass the test. So at this point in time, since the only assertion we have is checking for the length equaling to zero when the collection is empty. The simplest implementation would be just to create an attribute called length and return a value of zero. So if we run the test case now, it should be green. So that's the second part of the cycle, the green part of the cycle where you pass the test case. Now we move on to the third part where we want to refactor the module, the library that we are building, in this case, the collections library. And we do that by first enhancing the test suit. So we add a new condition. You can say greater than zero when collection not empty. So now, 
we write a new assertion. <clears throat> and use the operator method to test that C dot length is greater than zero because the collection is not empty. Logically, it should return a non zero number that's greater than zero. So now we go back to our test and we run it. <clears throat> It should fail. First one passes because it returns zero. Second one fails because it's expecting the C dot length to return a value greater than zero. Let's just instantiate a new collection object here, which we can then pass some values to. One, two, three. So we'll know that the collection will be populated with a list of items. If we come back over here. We can no longer use a hard-coded variant of length. We now have to provide an attribute that returns dynamic content. And we can do that in JavaScript using getters. I'm going to create a getter called length. Right now, I intend for it to return this.items.length. So I'll use that. So this dot items is an attribute of the collections class. We want to populate the contents of items using the arguments passed to the collection constructor. However, the argument argument, which is a magic argument injecting to every function, is not an array. It is an object. So in order to treat this object like an array, we'll have to run it through the array prototype slice function. Right, splice, S P L I C splice. So we run the call method, we pass the arguments object as the context, and then we indicate we want it to be spliced, as in return a shallow copy from the zero element all the way up to the end of the argument object. Now we go back over here and we run the test case. You now see that it passes for both conditions. At this point, the collections object has been enhanced to return a dynamic value for length. You can of course refactor your length suite and add more conditions, but I'm going to move on to the next method that we are going to write a suite for, that being the index of method. So the first test we want to do is that it should equals negative one when item not found. Here we again do an assert. We can do a equal check for negative one. And then we run C dot index of and specify this item name. Let's try looking for item four because we know that item can't be found. I go back and run the test. And of course it's going to fail on me because object has no method index of. So let's go back to the implementation and add an index of method. I'm going to add it right below the collection function. I'll get index of and, and again, keep things simple, you return the bare minimum, that being negative one, which will fulfill the minimum requirements of this assertion. Go back over here. Voila, equals negative one when item four not found. 
So again, now we go back and we enhance the conditions of our suite equals does not equal negative one when item three is found. So here, we know item 3 is at the end of the collection, so we can just use c dot length minus 1 because that's the expected return value of index of when you try to look for argument number 3. And we need to make one change over here. We now add or populate the collection with values in the setup method. Here we need to fix the test case by just adding an empty collection. If I go back here, it should run successfully. Not equal one failing expected two to equal negative one. Ah yes, it's not working because we need to fix up the implementation. So how do we fix this implementation? Well, Come over here, we have reference to this of items. Create the variable here, i equals zero. So we're going to iterate through the items array. Okay. They call return that, that as negative one, return that instead of negative one directly. And then we check if items i equals item. We then set the position to i and then we break out of the all loop. And then when you run it, it now uh, does not equal negative one when the item is found. So that's enough for index of. Let's move on to implementing the push method. So for push, when you use the push method, And insert, it should return the item you pushed into the array. So let's say we want to push 5. C dot push 5 equals 5 when item 5 is added to collection. That's the first test we want to do. Of course, if you run it, it's going to fail. Let's add the push method over here. Simplest implementation is to just return 5 directly. Run the test case. Works. Now let's enhance the condition further. Equals six when items five and six are added to collection. So why is it only returning six? I'm following the behavior of node. So if I were to run node directly, let's say I create an array one, two, three. I do array dot push four, returns four, and then it adds it to the array. If I push multiple objects, multiple items, so it returns the last number, but it pushes both. So it should equal six when you are pushing items five and six. Let's do an assert equal six, see the push 
five, six. Then run the test case. And of course, it's going to fail because it's expecting value return value of six, but the method is just returning five because it's hard coded over here. So we got to fix this now. It is by adding an item to the items array. So item would be a reference to this dot items. This dot items. Okay. Items. Item dot length. Those item. Then return the value of item. If we go back over here. You notice the first one still works, but the second one doesn't because you're pushing two items. So if I had to add an individual test for a different item value, then pushing six, it should still work. Right, so five and six are valid. Now the reason this one's not working is because we are working with an array. So let's modify this up a bit. Again, we're going to use the I, the arguments object. Let's call it uh, new items items. The new items. Again, we use the array dot prototype dot splice dot call method. We pass the arguments object as its context from zero. So this way, no matter how many arguments you provide, whether it's a single argument to push or double, triple argument to push will always result in an array in new items. This is something we can work with to simplify our code. So now we'll have to iterate to new items. So let's go i less than new items at length i plus plus. Item the length should equal to new items i. New items, you want to return the last value in the new items array. And in order to get that, you simply just call new items dot length minus one. Save it. And let's try running the test case again. Now you can see that the test case actually passes. If you want to confirm that it's a so it's adding multiple values, different values, say equals eight when you add items seven and eight. And on top of that, we want to console.log c.items just to confirm. Six, five, and six. Give it an appropriate console log message, so we don't get confused between the two outputs. Back over here. Run the smoke test. As you can see, this collection items object here, array here, has been populated with five and six, whereas the second one has been populated with seven and eight. So we know that it's working. So. And I believe that's sufficient for the push method. You can, of course, enhance, enhance it further to suit your needs in the refactor phase. Now let's add the final method, the top method. So we have an array of three items. By default, because every time you run a new test, it's going to reset the environment according to setup. C will always point to a new collection object with these three items. So 
if we were to run pop, it should remove and return the last element in the array, or in this case, our collection. So it pulls three. So it removes item three, removes last item, and returns three. item from collection and returns three. Or you can be less verbose about it. So last item returns three. I think that should be sufficient. Then we do an assert dot equal. It should return three because we are running c dot pop. Then run the test. So it has no method pop. We now need to go implement the pop method. over here and then come back to the bottom over here and then I add the pop method and I wanted to satisfy the requirements of the test case, the minimum requirement. So I then just have it return three directly. Run the test case. So it's fine. Now let's Go back and refactor the test case, add additional condition. Wanted to return, let's say, five. Because you want to push four and five into the array. And when you pop it, it should return five. Because five is now at the end of the collection. Of course, this is going to fail. Expected 5 to equal 3, which is what c.pop returns because hard coded. So we go back to the pop method. We now need to return the last item in the array. We can do that with this dot items. Items, this dot items. Bring this to shorten the code. Item dot length minus one. Let's see if this fulfills both our test case requirements, and it does. However, if you if you notice, we are just returning the item. We are not actually removing it from the array. So we need to do an additional assertion. So the We can check to see that c dot items is equal to say the last item is equal to four. So c dot length minus c dot c dot length minus one. We should return four, assuming it's been popped. However, it's still returning five because it's a topmost value, but it's not removing it. So now we have to add code to handle the removal. Let's do this with a new array. Let's call it new items, items, new items. Then we run through the items object, but we want to run it through one less. So it does not include the last item. Of course, I'm going to declare I. So now this should solve the issue. Four to equal five. Ah, yes. Sorry. So we need to make sure this items points to new items.
And now we can see that top works fine, so a more dynamic. So following this approach, you will pretty much be writing the bare minimum necessary for your implementation, which is good. It complies with the less is more approach of writing code effectively. You don't want to churn out code unnecessarily because code is not an asset, it's a liability. More code you write, the more you need to manage, the greater the likelihood of bugs you have to deal with. So following TDD, when developing code, allows you to minimize the amount of code necessary in order to make your system functional. Now I mentioned that I also do a hands-on on BDD. I'm just going to use this example over here. BDD, you're pretty much just changing the keywords. Let me just uh, copy paste this out. In case that's a problem, I'm going to copy it over to collection bdd.ps. Okay, here. All right. Oh, sorry, the wrong collection of it. Go back to the test directory. Copy this over to collection hpdd.js. And then run collection hpdd.js. And I'm going to change the keyword in use here. So for BDD, you use a describe method instead of suit. For setup, you use um, before each. And for sweet, so you change this to describe, to it, to test, all instances of test you change to it. All instances of sweet shall be changed to describe. And to keep it simplified, Keep it more like Scilight English, you should say it should equal zero when the collection is empty. And you do the same for all the other statements. It should be greater than zero when the collection is not empty. It should equal negative one when item four is not found. So if you'll notice, it's just changing the styling of the statements. And these statements and complying with BDD, since it takes into account domain-driven design, hence the inclusion of stakeholders, these statements should be provided by the stakeholder. Generally, it won't be as technical as this because the stakeholder statements will be the direct user-facing functional requirements. Okay, so I won't be changing all the statements since we are pressing for time. I'm just going to quickly go back to Mocha and run it directly. So now I'm running collection BDD. If you notice, I'm not using the UI flag to switch it to BDD. I could, but since Mocha runs in BDD mode by default, I'll just omit the flag. And as you can see, the test case passes just fine. Right, so that concludes our introductory segment to JavaScript testing. In the here are some resources you guys can use, if you want to find Node.js, I mentioned it's at Node.js.org, you want to learn how to work with Mocha and Chai more extensively, you can check out their APIs at their respective um, websites, Mocha.js.org for Mocha and Chai.js for Chai. So what's next? I'll be having webinars to cover the, the full length of implementing proper testing in your system, so we'll cover mocking as well and then for front-end testing, I'll be covering AngularJS together with Karma and Mocha. And 
future webinars will cover continuous integrations and the sort code coverage as well. So just um, quick view of what you guys should expect in the future from Olin Data's webinars as far as Node.js Tech is concerned. So now that we are done, I'll be taking questions for the remainder of this session, which is about 10 minutes at the most. Yeah, so if everybody, anybody has a question, you can either use the button to raise your hand or uh, you can type it in the uh, in the questions uh, box, uh, whichever one uh, one you like. Um, you can also reach me directly at raj at olindata.com if you have any questions. Also, and I'll launch another poll. I, I'm not sure that that poll that I launched in the middle of the webinar uh, blocked everybody from seeing the slides. Um, but um, I'm hoping that that was not the case. What was the poll? Yeah, so I, I asked a question about uh, whether people were using uh, Node or, uh, or other uh, JavaScript frameworks uh, or uh, uh, whether, whether they were using it in production. Uh, and now I just launched a poll for um, uh, whether people are, uh, are using the testing. Uh, and I see that, uh, as expected probably for this webinar, that 75% of people uh, uh, that have responded to the poll so far, 80% uh, uh, are not using any testing, but they're planning to. Uh, so uh, I think that's a, a, a quite common scenario, unfortunately. So uh, I think there's a lot of um, ground to gain for uh, for these kind of uh, testing frameworks. Okay, well, I'm answering some questions, a simple library. Uh, so there are two uh, questions, uh, Raj. I don't know. Can you, can you see them in the question box? The one is: Does Mocha yeah. have uh, IDE integration? Not that I know of. Um, actually, wait. If they're using WebStorm. Storm does if you're using it. Oh, we can uh, we can look up uh, to see if there's any uh, IDE integration and, and and answer that in a in a follow up uh, email. Use case. What is Christian's question? That's a good question. Wait, I thought I saw a hand raised earlier. Which attendee was it? I don't see any. I have it sorted. Oh, wait, elsewhere. that was Krishna. Yeah. He raised his hand for 13 minutes. Um, not attentive. Oh, quite a number of them. Wait, one, two, three, not attentive. Uh, Krishna is a question. Use case. What do you mean by use case? Maybe he wants to know what the use case is for testing uh, uh, JavaScript, but basically any code that you write should be fully tested in an ideal world. Uh, and uh, if you force yourself to uh, to write tests before you write any new code, even in an existing oh, code, okay. uh, then uh, as new code enters the system only fully tested, uh, then um, uh, you'll automatically start filling up tests for, uh, for missing parts. And you can slowly move towards getting an existing code base tested because it's usually not really a good idea to uh, spend an enormous amount of time not producing any new code and just writing tests for your existing code and nobody likes doing that. So uh, uh, it's better if you already have an existing uh, uh, project to uh, to start uh, testing new code and then uh, slowly add coverage to existing uh, code as well. All right. If there are not any other questions, then we'll. Oh wait, we do have. Uh, can we test uh, UI interaction with? Yeah. Adam? Raj. Yeah, I'm. I would like to. Oh, you can. Uh, you can read out the question and. Uh, uh, read out the question to everyone. Or? Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Then everybody. Can hear us? Yep. All right, so who asked this question? Ashish Nanotkar asked if we can test UI interaction with Mocha. You can use Mocha to 
write the test cases, like how I mentioned earlier, but when it comes to asserting, which is what you're trying to do with the UI interaction, you can't use, I mean, Mocha doesn't provide that for you. So you can use Karma, and in fact, I'll be covering AngularJS and Karma together with Mocha in a future webinar, most likely the next one. Yeah, so Mocha and, and Karma are mostly for, for backend uh, testing, and then uh, Karma so is just the, It's a framework for build, writing the test cases. It doesn't do the assertions or the interactivity testing. It's just what you see, the reporting aspect, the creation of the conditions, that's what it provides. And then there is a second question. Are there any other forms of report results other than console output? Yeah, you can dump out different kinds of um, report results. Yeah, so, so you can dump it in decent format as well. Okay, Mocha test collection. JS, use the reporter argument. If I'm not mistaken, it does have JSON as well. Let me try this out. Hold on. Suite is not defined. All oh, right, sorry, I have to switch back to DDD mode. As you can see, it outputs the JSON. There's a few other uh, reporting output as well. You've got JSON. If you want, you can, um, there's one called landing. So you can see a nice little landing strip. Ideally, you should see a plain icon where the question mark is, but because I'm running Windows and the character mapping is not included, you won't see it. It works fine on Linux and Mac for me. There's quite a lot more that you can work with, different kinds of reporters. You can check out what those reporters are on the mocha.js.org page. Can you implement your own reporter if you wanted to? Yeah, it's pluggable. You can just head on over to um, the GitHub repo and then look at the code, see how they do it, and then, well, just go ahead. Hack away. Yeah. Guys a little bit. All right. Thank you very much. Um, I don't see any other questions, and we have like eight minutes left, so um, uh, I think we uh, we can uh, bring it to an end. Ah, one more question. Nope. Uh, how to test callbacks? Hold on, yeah. Okay, so if you want to test callbacks, Let's say you have a callback method. Okay, I don't have a callback class. Let me just simply create a callback JS. So let's go with DDD. Describe you have some class. It should return. Yeah, maybe you're testing the file method. Um, Node.js file module, the file system module, FS module. It should date return data or file it should return file contents when reading a file. So you then have your function over here. So fs.read file, specify the path of the file. So let's go for something local. Let's just see how back.js we can specify utf8. So error. Contents. There's an error, you handle the error. Otherwise, you can see data, after which you can then assert the right, content. You can see content and then you can assert content. So let's add the 
FS module, the file system module. Now, if I were to run it just as is, callback. It's just going to pass fine, but it's not outputting data because it's an asynchronous operation and this is running synchronously. So it completes, it doesn't wait for FS or read file, it then terminates the test. So what you need to do in order to test asynchronous uh, methods is you use the done method over here. By adding the done method, Mocha then expects the done method to be called before it terminates the test failing which it then throws a timeout error. So as you can see, now it returns the contents of the file, but to, um, let's say, complete this test, we still need to call done after we've done the assertion. Assertion, let's go here. And of course, if there's an error, you pass done error, and then you'd expect it to turn over here. Now you run callback to return file contents when reading a file. You can test for the error in a separate if statement, etc. So that's how you work with asynchronous methods with Mocha. I hope that answers your question. Very good. I think that was a very quick uh, uh, um, I said it, explanation. You write code quicker than I can think it up. Um, so that's great. Um, I don't see any other questions. Last call for questions, and then we uh, really uh, wrap it up, because it's uh, four minutes to uh, before we re re reach the hour that we've uh, promised to stay within. Um, Oh, I think Krishna had one question, right? Use case. I'll, but you already explained that earlier, right? I think everyone heard it. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll uh, um, uh, contact him outside of the uh, uh, the webinar as well. Um, okay, thank you very much, uh, Raj, for a great, quick introduction. You're uh, lightning fast, but uh, I hope that it was uh, useful for uh, for people. If you have any questions, feel free to uh, uh, email uh, either raj at olandata.com or uh, if you have more generic questions, uh, info at olandata.com. Um, if you feel like you want to learn more about uh, Node.js in particular, we have some uh, some trainings as well. Uh, take a look at our website. And um, um, if you have uh, uh, any uh, uh, comments about the webinar in general, uh, feel free to, uh, to contact me at uh, walterheck at olandata.com. Um, that's all for